What's up guys, welcome to Getting Fish. Today I'm gonna to be telling you the story of the last time I went fishing. I'm gonna tell you what I learned from that trip and the tip that I learned from that trip. I'm gonna be telling you guys as well as some baits uh, that go along with that. So yeah, let's get into it. But first I just want you to go down below, click the like button, click subscribe, hit the bell notification, all that. You know the deal, you probably see other people do it, say it on YouTube, you know what to do. Hit that stuff for me, I'd appreciate it, thank you. So let's get into it. So basically what happened is this was a few days ago. I mean, it's March 16th and I'm in Pennsylvania. So ice just came off the lakes um, about a week ago, maybe five days ago. Um, and we were two days after the ice came off, we were fishing, me and my brother, just fishing from, from shore at a local lake. And um, we hit the first spot and didn't get anything. And then we walked around to a different side of the lake. It's about a 20 acre lake. And we weren't getting anything either. And then my brother, he decided, we, we were honestly about to go home, but he t tied on this little tiny crankbait. And I'll get to that in a minute, but he tied on this small crankbait and he's he was gonna go down to the creek below. But before he went down there, he was just taking casts on the main lake. So he's gonna take cre casts in the creek that leads out of the lake. But he's taking casts on the main lake and he catches one. And all of a sudden he, he caught like seven fish in a half an hour. And we hadn't caught anything for an hour or two at this point. So he was lighting it up with this little crankbait. And I'm not sure what, I think honestly it was the size. And that's what this video is about is ultra downsized presentations to catch you uh, bass in early spring or for that matter, any time of the year. But the smallest things I could find that would work good for bass and a bunch of options for that. So, and that was the key, you know, because, and I, when I say ultra small, I mean ultra small, not like a regular 1.0 or a small Ned rig or something like that. I was throwing a Ned rig. I had a, oops. I actually had a bite on this small, this little Ned rig here, just a, you know, three inch quarter ounce head. And honestly, it, I got a small bite, but I couldn't get, I couldn't catch anything. I couldn't get anything to commit to it. Um, just one little nibble. That was it. And my brother was throwing a drop shot, um, with just a dream shot where I'm actually, so just like four and a half inches, four inches. And he didn't get anything on that. And it was crazy. Um, he switched to that crankbait and he started catching it. Now this crankbait is tiny. Um, I'm going to go into the baits in a minute, but I, when I say, I'm just going to reiterate this. When I say small, I mean small. Um, like ultra, ultra small. Like I said, couldn't get bites in the Ned rig. So we're talking three inches or less. Um, and honestly, I think part of the reason why the Ned rig wasn't working is it's because it got, it's got that quarter ounce head, three sixteenth ounce head, whatever it is. Um, it's falling quick. Um, it's on the bottom, and even though I was working it real slow on the bottom, I still think it was just a little bit too much for him. So I'm going to be going through some baits for you uh, here right now. Um, and actually what I did is I switched up to a bait, and so I guess that's what we're going to go into first is the bait I switched to that I caught a couple fish on. So bait I switched to right here, it's a crosstail shad, um, three inches. It's really, really, uh, really small, really finessey. I have it in that smoke purple color. The focus is here. Yeah, smoke purple. Great color. Um, it's very subtle. Um, and that on a drop shot, just where you... I was mostly dead sticking it, and once in a while I just give it a little small shake. And then that cold water, that was really clutching into getting me a couple bites. And so I did get a couple bites on that. Um, and that's probably, honestly, the biggest end of the things I'm going to be eating. That's the biggest bait I'm going to be talking about. Because I didn't get do nearly as well as he did on his tiny little crankbait. Um, but... Um, I did catch a couple. So that's the first one. Um, I'm going to leave links to all these baits, almost all of them. There's a couple I couldn't find links for in the description below. So you can go check them out. So next um, is the Kitec Custom Leech. Now, I don't have any of these on hand, but it's one I saw in Tackle Warehouse. And it's one my friend Noah uses a lot. And he does really well on this, just drop shotting in the summer. Um, it's just a small three-inch bait. It's three inches, but it's super thin. It's it's a small worm, um, small little leech bait. And that works great on a drop shot, so that's the other option. Now, before we get too much more into drop shotting, I do want to talk about the gear I'm using the drop shot with. I'm using a standard 7-foot medium action spinning rod, um, standard 2500 size reel, an 8-pound line, although in this situation, I would downsize to even 6 or 4 if I had it with me. Um, so yeah, and then as for drop shot weights... You know, this was a real challenge for me. I'm still not even sure what to what to say to do. And honestly, you just have to go out there and experiment with yourselves and see what works. But I was using an 8-ounce uh, drop shot weight. Now, that's the smallest size I have. Um, a little trick I learned is you can actually take some clip, some like, I'm not sure what they're called, wire snips maybe or something. I don't know. 
some sort of heavy duty like scissors and literally cut that weight in half, like pliers or something even. Cut that weight in half, give yourself a 16th ounce weight. Very finessey, very slow fall. Uh, that's a good trick. That'll get you some more bites. But the thing is with that weight and the wind that was out there, I mean, it was ripping. It was 20 mile an hour winds. It's hard to it's hard to fish with that small weight. So I could up uh, size up to a quarter or um, a three eighths, but that eighth ounce was was doing all right for me. So it's something you just have to experiment for with yourself and go with it. And then the hook, just as small as you can get, kind of. This is a size. What is it? It's a Gamagatsu finesse wide gap. Let's see if it focuses. Yeah, finesse wide gap. It's a size two hook. Really small. Really finessey. Um, even go to a size four maybe um, for some of these baits. But yeah, really small. Um, great little drop shot presentation. The last bait I'm going to tell you about here. This one never used it. I've seen a lot of press on it, um, and I saw it in Tackle Wars, and I think it would be perfect for the situation. It's the Demiki Bing Shad. Now this is a little really natural looking bait. Um, has a nice eye, as you can see here, and um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of it. Um, I, I really think it will do well, and so links down below for that. Check it out. Um, I think it would look great on a little drop shot. It's only one and a half inches, so definitely give that one a shot. And next, we're going to be moving into the small swim baits. Um, so first off, um, all the standard swim baits that I would throw. A Kitek 2.8. I was throwing actually a four inch Kitek too. I threw that. I threw a small jerk bait. Um, and I couldn't get him to eat anything. But this is a 2.8 Kitek fat, swing impact fat. Um, if you look there, if it focuses, there you go. Just a small little swim bait. That's a perch color. Um, that one's a little bit smaller. That one, if I would have thrown that, I probably could have gotten bit. Um, but yeah, it was. It was incredible, but that was a that's another good option there. Um, it all depends on how finicky they are, you know. Sometimes you may have to go to the smallest of small. Sometimes you can get away with throwing something um, a little bit bigger, like a three inch Kitek or something like that. But that's our our two point eight inch swing impact fat. Um, but Kitek has two other swim baits that I also want to talk about. So it has the swing impact, and they offer that in a two inch size. That's going to be deadly. Um, I'll throw a picture of that up right here. And then as well as that, they also have one called the Easy Shiner. Um, and that's a that's a slightly different size or shaped bait. So um, different shape. It doesn't have those ridges. But um, it's one I've used before. Not in that size, but I've used the Easy Shiner before. And I think that two inch size will really do well. Now I'm rigging all these Kitex. I'd probably be rigging these on the Dirty Jigs Guppy Head. Um, focuses there. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, just a small little jig head. The smallest jig head you can find. Eighth ounce. Um, probably at the heaviest and same thing a seven foot medium to medium light rod whatever you're comfortable with whatever you got really um but yeah that's that's kind of the swim baits there we do have one more that i found now i've never used this one but this is called the cream lures spoiler swim bait i'll throw a picture up of it um just a pre-rigged little swim bait um and it was a two incher so i figured this one would would definitely work in this scenario um and it would probably get you some good bites too so yeah, those are some options for you if you want to go down the swim bait route. Now, there's one more route, and this is this is the bait that did it, um, the hard baits. Now, my brother was throwing. It was called it's called a Rebler, uh, uh, a Rebel Super Teeny We R crankbait. Now, they also have a wake version of this, but basically what this is is it's a tiny, tiny crankbait. I'll put put a picture of of it here, um, and it's it, it's his. So I don't have it with me to show you in person, but I have a picture here. And, um, and yeah, it's a really small crankbait, super finesse, only getting down one to two feet at the most. Um, and he's just reeling it through the water and these fish were just coming unleashed for it. I mean, he's, he caught him, I think two or three casts in a row on this little, little crankbait. It was crazy. Um, so yeah, that's top option. I think he was using it in like, it was the Tennessee shad color. So whatever, whatever picture I showed, uh, that's the color that he was doing really well with it. So Definitely try that one out if you want to go down the crankbait route. Um, another one I saw, I was throwing a little uh, Rapala jerk bait, maybe a three or four inch minnow. Um, it was an X wrap, I think it was a little feather treble hook on the end. And usually that jerk bait does really well for me as a finesse jerk bait, but I couldn't get anything on it. Um, and I think it was the size. I really do think it was the size. And so what I did is I found the Rapala original floater. And this is the F05 version, it's a two inch Rapala. So I think it's the same size as a lot of these other baits I've been telling you about. 
So that that's a real finesse um, jerk bait slash crank bait that'll that'll get you some good bites as well. Then last but not least, well, I do have one more I do want to throw in. Yeah, I should have mentioned it earlier, but this is the last one of the hard baits I'm going to tell you about. I it was funny because I after this day, you know, I'm thinking about man, what other baits could I have thrown? And I found a bunch of baits in my box that I really could have done well with if I had taken them out. So this here is a Swedish pimple typically used for ice fishing and stuff but if you can throw that put it in front of the fish jig it by them they would definitely eat that in this cold water i didn't throw it uh that day but um it's a it's a solid bait and it would definitely get some of those uh tough cold water bites that the fish wouldn't that the fish wouldn't be eating anything else with um, and then sort of last year is something else I found in my box. I think it's a Northland Lures. I couldn't even find it. And I couldn't find the link for the Swedish Pimple, but, um, I did put it in the description. Just, I don't have a link for you, but this is, I think it's a Northland swim bait. I don't know. I found it in my dad's box and I grabbed it, but it's a real small little bluegill swim bait. I feel like, um, that would do really well in this scenario where they're not really eating much, um, much of much anything of size and so i uh think that one would also do well now i do want to talk briefly about the colors if you run into this situation so we're talking early spring um so usually at least in my body's order they seem to get uh, pretty clear in the early spring now everyone will say like they get muddy and dirty water in the early spring but actually what happens is when the first ice first melts that water's super clear because it has no sun, there's no plankton growth or anything like that. So that water's gin clear usually. So I like the natural colors. Later in the spring, the muddy will murky up when the rain and snow melt really comes in. And that'll uh, that'll cause the water to murky up. But we're talking early spring ice out conditions. I'm telling you these natural colors and the clear water is what you want to throw. Um, all the pictures I've shown you were kind of some of the top picks of the colors I saw. So try those. So I think that's about it. Um, that's all I want to say about these small baits. So I just want to thank you for watching this video. If you found the information useful, like the video, subscribe, like I said before. Let me know how you did. Let me know if the strategy worked for you. Um, found any other small baits you want to let me know about? Leave it down below. Uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.